What do gemstones and snowflakes have in common? Snowflakes have interesting patterns and gemstones can have interesting patterns. Gemstones can be white, snowflakes are white. <laughs> gemstones can be yellow, snowflakes can be yellow. <laughs> That's pretty. Who made those? Oh my gosh. Oh, this is like arboretos, ar ar arboretic silver? Arborescent. Arborescent. Arbor this is arborescent silver and arborescent is like tree-like. Okay, we have interesting patterns here. We have an interesting pattern here. So I'm not quite sure what we're talking about today. Something about crystals and growth. I'm sure Elizabeth will illuminate what's going on. We are like the dynamic duo at JTV. She is the geologist powerhouse and I'm the gemologist. Elizabeth is also a gemologist now, but we always have loads of fun. And I'm gonna bring her on right now and we're gonna solve the mystery of today's episode. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie. This was probably the first time I've made snowflakes since I was you in were, like, like grade school. <laughs> And Chris knows I was sitting there really stressed out about it. <laughs> I actually think this one turned out really, really good. I like this one. This is my favorite one. So we're going to be talking about something called skeletal crystals, which is a type of crystal and growth. And it actually gives us a couple different forms. So you said that you were seeing like arborescent here. Another term that can be equally used, arborescent or dendritic, just means that you have a central point and then it branches much like a tree or sometimes it'll start looking like a fern. So if you get one that's very straight and then it branches off, it starts looking like a fern. These are actually natural fractal patterns. If anybody's ever looked up fractals, um, they're these really cool mathematical like spirals and just these beautiful ever repeating kind of ferns and stuff like that. They're really cool. Another natural fractal is the center of a sunflower. Oh, okay. If you've ever seen that, it's yeah. a repeating pattern from the middle all the way out. Kitchen. The reason that I made these fun snowflakes is that ice crystals can actually create these same dendritic branching patterns. You know, you're right on the windows in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. If you look on your, it looks like frost. Yeah, it burns. looks like what you'd see in a, in a gemstone. So water is not a mineral, but ice is a mineral, which is cool. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a weird thing because you don't think of frozen water as being an actual mineral, but it meets all of the standards. It's an inorganic crystalline solid with a repeating structure and pattern that has specific properties because of that repeating structure. Very cool. So there's a couple different minerals that can actually take this shape. A lot of them are actually metallic minerals. Okay. So of course the silver, gold can do it, copper can do it. Do you have any yeah. specimens by any chance? Yeah, I do. So this is actually my own personal specimen. Oh, that's beautiful. So this is a believe... very flat, that is so pretty. dendritic copper crystal. I can't believe this is natural. That's what Mother yeah. Nature, isn't that so cool? Isn't it cool? That is so pretty. Copper, silver, and gold are all part of the cubic crystal system. In an ideal situation, these crystals want to equally grow along every surface. So in an ideal situation, a copper crystal would actually be a cube. Mm -hmm. What you have here is where they don't get what they want and they actually have to adapt to that situation, which is really cool. Where they're growing in the ground, you actually have what is called a interface between those crystals and between the solutions they're actually growing in. Sometimes what happens is, is you get this ideal fluid that has all the building blocks they need, but then you have what they reject which is anything else that they don't want to incorporate. That builds up around the outside of some of those crystals. As this copper is growing, it's going, oh, well now I'm surrounded by all of the stuff that I really don't need. Well, all of a sudden this little branch is closer to all the stuff that I do need and actually are able to grab and snatch what they need where other parts of it can't because it's too far away. And then it continues to grow in that direction. So here you can kind of see that one side actually grew more than the others. Mm -hmm. That means that however it was growing in that void, this side was actually able to get more nutrients than the, the other, other side, side that didn't grow nearly as much. Very cool. The crystal kind of grows to where the nutrients are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you don't have nutrients, you don't have growth. And I think that's right. kind of funny when you think of nutrients. Yeah, you know, for a rock. Well, yeah, but like it's, it's they're growing toward iron or calcium and like that's what we need to grow too. It's just, yeah, it's funny. No, it, it is really neat. You know, and you get these just absolutely wild crystal formations. This is another one. So this is a skeletal quartz crystal. 
And so here, this kind of gives us a look into what we'll cover here in a second, which is what's called hoppered crystal growth. Here we have what is also called a finister quartz. Well, finister is a German term and it actually means window. You can actually look inside of this crystal and see where going back, you have this growth where the edges of the crystal were growing and then the middle of it wasn't growing as fast. It grows up and in and you still get that window paned appearance. And so here, what that is, is you have that electrical charge along that little tiny lattice and it'll actually attract more to the edges than to the middle of the faces on the crystal. And the important thing to remember is too, this only happens in what's called like a super saturated environment. So you have to have a ton of the components needed to grow these crystals. If it's quartz, you need silica and oxygen. You have this really quick growth that causes these changes. I know under the umbrella of skeletal, there's dendritic and hopper. So right. tell me the difference. I know they both have to do with like growing to the nutrients. Well, so with the dendrites, you have this preferential growth where they send out a little feeler to try to move towards the nutrients that they need. It's kind of like a plant reaching for the sun. Oh, like my flowers. When I right. put them in water, they always turn toward the window where the sun right. is. Got it. Okay, so then hopper. So what you have here is you have this attraction along the edges of those crystal faces rather than just the edge of a single point. Oh, they keep growing. Yeah, they grow in like do a we, basket. I'm sure we, do we have an example of a... Yeah, so we've got, we've got some more examples. So we've got, boom. Oh, those are so pretty. So this is actually halite. Okay, so this is a hopper crystal. This is hopper crystal. So these halite are salt. is salt. We've had this on the channel before. We are not licking this, even no. though it's salt. That'd be I would really not. gross. No, I don't want to Okay, so that. tell us about a hopper crystal. Okay. You can see like it looks like little baskets. Yeah, as it is growing in its little environment, you have more of a growth around the edges because there's a higher electrical attraction mm -hmm. there the face of the crystal is not growing nearly as much as the rest of it. So you have basically, you're making layers to a wicker basket. That's a really good example, layers to a wicker basket. Yeah, so you have your, Very cool. your bottom layer okay. and then you're building up on the sides and you can get these really cool interesting very i guess like industrial looking patterns so, like they're very neat so i when guess you see them when you think about skeletal crystals both examples are growing toward the nutrients they're just doing it in a different way sometimes right. it's like one branch other times it's the whole like yeah it's the whole box the whole box We've got a couple so more why, examples why is this important in gemology elizabeth so this is important in gemology because the more we know about how they form in the earth the better we can find them, use them, understand how we get them, or in some cases, like this bismuth, synthesize them. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is not a natural bismuth crystal that came out of the ground. This is my own little bismuth crystal. I love that, that's adorable. Um, the reason I love bismuth as an example of hopper is that as you turn it in your hand, you can actually see what are these bands, where it actually has these steps, you know, these very obvious like pyramid steps so that they're cool. going out from the and center. And I like the different colors too. Tell us about that. Where does yeah. that come from? So that that's just a product of oxidation. So a lot of these bismuth crystals are actually grown pretty much in like a big pot, mm -hmm. essentially. So as soon as you turn that heat off on that pot, they're quickly cooling and those crystals start forming almost immediately. Mm -hmm. You can also see where it kind of started to make like little spirals out of the middle. That's just where you had some partial cubic growth. So it basically kept going around. And since there was no cubic face to attach to it, you got this really neat, really interesting looking little spiral. They're just a really interesting, cool specimen to have. I hate to say this, they're like super cheap. Like it's one of the most fun things that like you can get for yourself. You're not breaking the bank. Like I bought this for my husband because he's a chemical engineer and I always feel bad because I don't buy him things when I go to gym shows. <laughs> so I usually try to make sure I get him something that kind of pertains to what he likes. And since it's grown in a lab, he always thought that was really cool. So this was something that Christopher let me borrow. I have actually never laid eyes on a pyrite like this. I knew it could happen. I've never seen that before. This comes out of Colorado, just an incredible specimen. So with pyrite, you can actually get several 
shapes of pyrite. So you can get your, you know, your cubes, your octahedrons, your dodecahedrons, just tons and tons of different forms of the same pattern. You've got these cubic faces right here. And then you have what are these, you know, little triangular shaped faces right here. From the bottom of the face, you get these little step-like patterns where you can see smaller cubes coming out and creating that larger triangle. Very cool. You have this just this beautiful step to growth from the center out. So you can definitely tell that this is a hopper crystal. It is not an etching. A lot of times people will get confused with things that are dissolved in solution rather than being a true hopper crystal. Mm -hmm. What I've seen at some shows before is you can get like hollow aquamarine crystals. You can get a hollow tourmaline crystal. Well, it's actually because they were etched by solution rather than actually growing like that. There's not a ton of crystals that actually take on this hopper shape. Mm -hmm. Just because the environments that are required to grow them are really pretty different. I have seen like dendritic patterns in jewelry, but only when they're in quartz. Would any of this be used in jewelry? Because I've never seen that. And you know how much of a jewelry lover I am. Yeah. So I have seen wire wrap bismuth. Okay. So that's, I mean, it's it's a very stable, very tough rock. You would never see this. Um, no, you'd, ne you'd never. never see the salt. Can you imagine wearing salt? That'd be kind of weird, salt jewelry. I mean, it would it would degrade very quickly. Like with like this pyrite, like it's, it's a specimen. I mean, like if you wrapped it or did something, you would kind of lose some of that really unique beauty that you could see in it. You could actually wire wrap the copper crystal. In our collection, we actually have a branch of dendritic silver, but it's very thick, and it was drilled to have a bale put on it. Oh, very Which delicious. I thought was really funny. When I first saw it, I went, why is there a hole in it? And then I realized that somebody had drilled really it so they could cool. wear it. This was a fun episode. I learned a few things. We've had about as much fun as you can have with paper snowflakes and salt, right? We got I definitely, I definitely went back to kindergarten. Did you? I was making these. Well, that's not a bad thing. You know, I feel like kindergarten was a really good time in our lives. We had yeah, nap time, snowflakes, snack time, and recess. We don't get that now. No, that'd be nice. Wouldn't that be really nice? Hint, hint, guys. Yeah, hint, hint. Anyone watching this, we'd like nap time and recess back. I just remember elementary school, they had these awesome, like, ice cream cups. Oh, yeah. Do you remember those? With the wooden spoon. Oh, those were so good. Where did those go? They still sell them. Do we just they? don't eat them. Oh, I can't. Let's, let's come back to kindergarten later. All right, guys. I want you to take a closer look at this piece. This is my favorite thing. I think this would be really cool mounted in a frame and like, yeah. you know, with like a white background. I think that's, it's absolutely gorgeous. So take a look at that growth. Always a treat to have you on, Elizabeth. We always get a little sidetracked. Sidetracked. Today was talking about kindergarten and elementary school. I don't know what does that say about our psyche that we want to go back to elementary school. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell if you want to see more episodes in the future. And comment below with two things. Number one, tell Elizabeth thank you. And number two, tell us if you want to learn more about crystal structure and crystal growth. And we'll catch you later. You're gonna come back. Oh, definitely. Thank you. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye.